Hi, and welcome to Small Groups tonight. I hope that you have had a wonderful night fellowshipping with others and finding strength together in the body of Christ. This semester, we have been discussing others, the importance of focusing on others in our everyday life, of reaching others, and then tonight we are going to discuss praying for others. I want to direct your attention tonight to 1 Timothy chapter 2, verses 1 through 4. Timothy is writing to his son, or Paul is writing to his son in the Gospel of Timothy, and he says, first of all then, I urge that supplications, prayers, intercessions, and thanksgivings be made for all people, for kings and all who are in high positions, that we may lead a peaceful and quiet life, godly and dignified in every way. This is good, and it is pleasing in the sight of God our Savior, who desires that all people to be saved, and come to the knowledge of the truth. Why is it so important that we pray for others? Well, God clearly tells us in his word that it is important to him that we pray for others. We also find that Jesus exampled all throughout his ministry, taking time to stop and intentionally pray for others. He prayed miracle prayers. He stopped and took time to see those around him and see their needs and pray. He taught his disciples to pray for others and he instructs us to pray for others. Could God move without our prayers? Could he work? Could he do miracles without our prayers in the lives of others? He absolutely could, but he chooses to invite us into the process and through prayers, he changes lives. He works miracles. He impacts nations and people groups through our prayers. God asks us to pray for all men, for all the people around us. This means we are praying for our friends. We're praying for our family. We're praying for our loved ones. It's easy to pray for those people, right? Because we know their needs. God asks us to pray for those who are lost, that they would come to salvation. He also asks us to pray for those who are in authority over us, our pastors, our leaders, those who have political authority over us. These are all men that Paul is instructing us to pray for. Jesus also asks us to pray for our enemies. Now, when I think about enemies, sometimes it's easy to think about someone like a, a terrorist or maybe someone who... Um, you would naturally think, oh, this is my enemy. But sometimes enemies are a little bit closer to home for us. Sometimes enemies are the people that annoy us. Or maybe it's the, um, the people who are against us, the people we're always complaining about. Those are our enemies also that we have got to pray for. And I don't know about you, but I have found that when I start praying for my enemies, not only does God start moving in that situation, but he also starts moving in my heart. And my heart is changed towards those people that I previously had an issue with. So God is using our prayers to impact the lives of others. We are praying for all men around us. So what do we pray and how do we pray? I'm going to give you a little bit of homework tonight. Go home and read Ephesians chapter 1 and then Ephesians chapter 3. I find there two wonderful examples of prayer that we can use to pray over the lives of others. Paul is getting beyond sometimes those surface issues of prayer that we are we find requesting prayer for and he starts digging into what's underneath that prayer. And he starts praying for things that people would have revelation of who God is in their life, that their hearts would be enlightened that they would know his great power, that they would be strengthened and rooted and grounded in his love. These are prayers that we can start praying for people. And then the Bible also says in Romans 8 that when we don't know what to pray, we can allow the Spirit to pray through us for others. I've done this many times, and I know that you probably have too. I want to tell Tonight, I want to tell a story about how my life and our family was impacted by the prayers of others. About three years ago, my oldest son was very sick. He had a cold that had just not gotten better and he had gotten progressively worse over the days. And we took him back to the doctor and we came away with that dreaded diagnosis that he had pneumonia. 
So they gave us medication and they sent us home and we, we gave him his first dose. And I said, you know, why don't you go lay down? And um, I was working around the house, trying to get things picked up. And I just had that nudge to kind of go back and check on him. So I went back to his room and he was laying so lifeless on his bed. It, it truly scared me. And he was pale and blue and he was really struggling to breathe. And I knew, I knew this was a serious situation. My husband was already on his way home for lunch and I absolutely panicked. I absolutely panicked that moment because I, I knew that we needed to get help. Um, I couldn't remember how to, how to call 911. I couldn't remember how to call the doctor. All I knew to say was Jesus. And he, my son was laying in front of me struggling so hard to breathe. And it was just such a helpless feeling. Um, I have a medical background and I know you're not supposed to panic, but I did panic. And while I was struggling, I looked down at my phone and I saw the name of a friend and I, I pressed her name. I called her and immediately she came on and I told her, Odin is struggling. I need you to pray right now. He, he can't breathe. We're going to have to take him to the hospital. I, I need you to pray. And so I put her on speakerphone and she started praying. She was truly touching God on behalf of our family. And I, I was still frantic and panicking and, and hoping that Nate would get home soon. And while she was praying over the phone over us, I just felt that unmistakable peace begin to settle inside of our room. It was like a really thick blanket began just dropping down over us. And I was watching my son, I was watching him breathe. I was counting his respirations. I was doing all the things I was trying to remember. And I just watched as that presence began to settle into his room as color began to return to him. And I could see him take a really big deep breath and all of a sudden just that ease of breathing. He stopped struggling for every breath. I hadn't been able to wake him up prior to this, which truly is what had scared me. And I could see him start to like stir and I knew he was he was coming back around. And about that time, my husband ran into the room and I was trying to explain to him what was happening. My friend is still praying on the phone. I'm trying to explain to him what's happening and I'm so panicked about all of this and I, I'm, I'm watching life return to his body. And I hear this, mama, mama, mama. And I'm like, hold, hold on, let me tell your dad about all of this. And I hear the voice again, mama, 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 hold on, hold on. You know how you do with your kids. And I suddenly stopped and I realized, you know, I hadn't been able to wake him up just a few minutes ago. And now here he is, he's, he sat up in bed and he asked me for pizza. And I knew we had turned a corner at that point. God used the power of someone else's prayers that day to truly work a miracle in my son's life and in the life of our family. Sometimes we don't always have the answers. My friend could not have gotten to us in time. She didn't have the medication, the knowledge to heal his body, but she had a resource and that was the power of prayer. And God used her that day to join together with his power and pray a prayer that changed our lives. God is inviting all of us in today to join with him in the power of prayer, to change the lives of those around us, to change our community, to change our families, to change the world. And he wants to do it with you through the power of prayer. Your group leader is gonna lead you tonight in a time of discussion. I pray that this impacts you and I pray that our prayers will begin to impact the world around us. Have a wonderful night.